Hello, my name is Lucas. This is a bit of lit. I would like to tell you that my name means bringer of light. And there we go. <laughs> uh, not the only thing that brings light. In fact, the book I'm talking about is about a horrific uh, device that also brings lots of light. And that book is Richard Rhodes's The Making of the Atomic Bomb, which my girlfriend bought for me for Christmas. And uh, I had been reading it since uh, Chinese New Year, the beginning of February, um, or a little bit before, and I took a break um, for a while because this book is very difficult to read in some respects uh, because, well, it is the story of the um, making of the atomic bomb, and it early on focuses on the origins of some of the scientists, physicists that worked on this project. Uh, a lot of them come from <laughs> Europe and uh, Hungary in particular. Um, and that was really fun and interesting to learn. The part where it gets really hard is where uh, it starts talking about all the scientific experiments and going into the nitty gritty details of that. Uh, I have a very simple understanding of physics, uh, so, you know, it's talking about these really advanced things, and I'm glad that it's there, but it was uh, difficult to track and difficult to follow in that respect, uh, but the parts that were about to the, you know, sort of the human element, um, and that were, that touched on what was happening in the world, globally speaking, in terms of, uh, World War One, post World War One, pre World War Two, and during World War Two, uh, those parts were excellent. Um, it was really interesting to learn um, about the somewhat difficult aspect of uh, having Robert Oppenheimer be sort of the lead director guy here because he was <laughs> basically. Uh, he was the only one without a Nobel laureate, uh, and all the other <laughs> people <laughs> had uh, done some incredible research that led them further in their studies and and to more discoveries and that kind of thing, and they were awarded with Nobel laureates in physics or chemistry or what have you. Um, it's also really interesting to learn about the personalities and the things that were going on in all these people's lives. Um, and how they chose uh, Los Alamos um, and why they chose it and all the sort of inside drama of the, uh, the project, uh, Project Manhattan, and this kind of thing. And by the end of the book, the last two chapters, section three, part three, um, it discusses, uh, you know, war in Europe is coming to a close because uh, Hitler made some critical error mistakes with Operation Barbarossa and, uh, you know, the war with Japan, however, uh, for the Americans was brutal and ugly and horrific um, and just there was a tremendous amount of bloodletting and all that. Um, oh, by the way, this also mentions how the reasons and the motivations for it, uh, a large part of it has to do with the fact that the Nazis were uh, studying this kind of thing. And um, from my understanding, the reason they weren't able to finish uh, was because of the uh, failures of their uh, two-side, two-front war. <laughs> so, um, anyway, uh, lots of other countries were working on it, um, working on these things, and of course, as we know, the Americans got to first and built, uh, uh, a little boy and fat man, um, and then the last two part, last two chapters in the last section, like I said, were about, uh, why the Americans chose to use bombs, um, 
and how they chose their targets. And the last section, was, the last chapter was the applicate the use of the bomb. Um, a lot of the stuff in that chapter uh, about why they chose, I've heard before and I've, I've learned uh, before. Certainly some of it I did not learn at all uh, when I was in school, but since then I've learned. Um, of course, when I was in school, as it does mention, there were some people very concerned with um, the war is still going on with Japan. It, uh, even though we're firebombing them to hell and back again in Tokyo and Nagoya and all these places, um, their morale seems not to be shaken. <laughs> and... Uh, which means we might have to do a land invasion and we'll lose half a million soldiers or maybe a million, this kind of thing. I've, I've heard that before, and that's why we had to use the bomb. But this book also goes into um, other concerns and concerns about those concerns. Um, what other concerns, you might be wondering? Well, uh, Soviet Russia, primarily, uh, who was apparently making plans on Manchuria, which is now China, um, which Japan had uh, been occupying at that time. And uh, yeah, there was a concern about, you know, the war in Europe had ended. What do we do uh, about the Soviets? We obviously are not going to fight them, but we don't want them to uh, you know, they're, they've got the Warsaw Pact and they're uh, occupying some uh, European lands and this kind of thing. We don't want the same kind of thing over on the other side and, and a whole bunch of other things. And also, like, there were uh, some people concerned about, like, um, that's something I hadn't learned in school, by the way. Um, the If we do a land invasion thing, that's what I heard in school, uh, these concerns about Soviet Russia. And what happened, what are they going to do after we use the bomb? Uh, <laughs> some people were concerned about uh, an arms race beginning. <laughs> ah, what a world we live in. Um, I, in some ways, do regret reading this as uh, tensions rise in Ukraine. Uh, but anyway... <laughs> there were people concerned about um, a potential arms race. And, like, do we tell them? Should we tell them beforehand? Uh, should we just let them see it? Uh, should we tell them that we have this ability? Or should we share this knowledge with everyone? This kind of thing. Why should we share this knowledge? Um, lots of really cool uh, things to learn about that. Um, oh, man. Now that I'm trying to talk about it, my brain is like trying to throw it out of my head so that I can't remember. Um, there were also, there was this one guy in this book referenced. Uh, I forgot who he is now, but uh, because of all the fire bombings in Japan, which are horrible enough, uh, this guy was really concerned. <laughs> Man, this guy's so bad. Uh, this guy was really concerned that there wouldn't be a proper city to use the atomic bomb on to display its full power. <sighs> uh, President Eisen, uh, well, General Eisenhower at the time, uh, sort of advised against it, even though he knew, you know, it's not his choice to make because he his war was over in Europe, um, but he felt strongly opposed to using it. Um, so that was interesting to read. Um, yeah, it goes into all different kinds of oppositions and people that were for using it and, and why and, and all the concerns that people had. Um, and the reactions of the scientists and that kind of stuff. The last chapter is, uh, yeah, about uh, dropping the bomb. And there are... Uh, it mostly goes into accounts from... Uh, Hiroshima, I believe. I believe they're all from Hiroshima. And then there's a few from Nagasaki as well. It talks about Hiroshima first, uh, naturally. Um, and 
it says, it, it, I mean, it, the, the accounts of what happened are, j and what people were seeing are just like, <sighs> it's very difficult to talk about because it's just so horrifying. And, um, yeah, really tragic and scary. Uh, and I would have to say personally, ugh. yeah, it was really tough to read. Um, I suppose it doesn't exactly matter, but I strongly disagree with <laughs> President Truman using them. Uh, I don't think he needed to because there was, you know, there were concerns about like what kind of surrender do we want the Japanese to have? They're willing to surrender, but we need unconditional surrender, even though we're... Anyway, it, it goes into that a lot too. Something I also had not learned in uh, high school, but had learned after the fact about uh, the willingness to surrender, but not unconditionally until... It, 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 are there going to be conditions or is it going to be unconditional? And then... Uh, Anyway, um, yeah, it's a really great book. Probably not something you want to read at the moment if you're keeping up with Ukraine. Um, but it was really valuable and uh, I really appreciate this book and I will probably keep it in my library just for coming back to it to make more sense these things and solidify them in my mind so that I don't to go uh, 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 when I'm talking about it because this is a very serious matter uh, and it's very well done and uh, yeah if there's other books that you think are better um, than this one about this subject um, you know let me know I thought it was really good it's the 25th anniversary of the of the it's the 25th anniversary edition of this and um, and won a Pulitzer Prize winner and a National Book Award and National Book Critics Circle Award. And, yeah, gotta say, I learned a whole heck of a lot. I'll probably go through the last few chapters again. Um, the last two, like I said. Uh, just to really get that into my mind, because it's really the, the most interesting part to read for me. Um, the other parts about the scientists and the build-up to, you know, working on the bomb. All really cool, too, but some of it's, like, so technical, it's very difficult to follow. Anyway, I'm going on and just kind of repeating myself. Uh, great book. Check it out. Have a good one. Goodbye.